It's road trip time! It is, and it's a bit different, isn't it? Obviously because of lockdown and so on. Safety. We've had to shorten this, but what we've tried to do is take in lots of environments, lots of terrains, and lots of things that will basically put the car under a lot of pressure. <laughs> and we also will get some adventure picnicking in at the same time. Yes, I haven't flung any baked goods at you in an MG in quite a while. Exactly. <laughs> now we do have the route planned and it's about 99.5 miles. Motorways, we take in A roads, we take in B roads, and we also go over two pretty strenuous passes as well in the Lake District. So let's go and see the first fully electric station wagon or estate car for Europe handles. Now, if you want to know about the origins, charge times and all that type of thing, check out the full review here. Road trip, the joy of reversing, but it's made very easy with a reversing camera and parking sensors. Fabulous MG5. Now, it may not resemble the rest of the designs, but that's because it's built on the Rove platform. The electric cars suit little villages so well. And if the boy racer comes up behind you, you have a 115 kilowatt electric motor, 52.5 kilowatt per hour electric battery, which generates 260 newton meters of torque. It gives you a range of around 214 miles. Sounds a bit aircrafty. Yeah, jet engine-y type yeah, thing, doesn't it? Does. it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it sounds very jet engine. But it's not overly loud. If you've got your music on, say, low, it should mask that sound if you don't want it. I quite like it, but I like sci-fi noises. Ooh, I'm feeling the regen. We're on regen level two. So that's interesting to know. When I started the car, it's in two. So let's do a bit of a launch. Uh oh, the car coming. Ah, okay. One thing to note, if you're pulling out of a junction, it may wheel spin. But when you put your foot down down a road, it grips well. Nice, comfortable, soft suspension as well. And there we go, and that's just literally from driving it a couple of miles. It's obviously quite quiet because the bikes can't even hear us. It's very quiet like this. Even with the window down. Yeah, I don't think they've heard us at all, have they? Well, you can launch if you need to. A little bit of spin, but far less. Ooh, Annabelle, get that. G5 can certainly whoosh. I like that technical terminology, whoosh. Mm. We will now head to the motorway and then we'll give you an update on how it feels on the motorway. But just quickly, corner's well, feels well planted, sure footed, but it's got a lot of weight with the batteries in it, so they do. And it's got soft suspension as well. So weirdly, it feels well planted. It feels a nice, comfortable ride. This will feel very familiar to anybody who's driven the MG ZS EV. You've got the rotary dial to select your drive mode, so reverse, neutral, drive. It is a one-speed drive as well. And you've got your modes here, which are your driving modes, curs, and battery as well. What it really does for this is selects your regen level. So now we're on three. So if I back off, yeah, it's, uh, it's like heavy braking. I typically drive on Regen 2. Range check, 180 miles, 83% battery. Doing well. From just this short drive, we've realized that people want to walk in front of this, whether they can't see it, hear it, who knows. And also cars like to pull out in front of it as well. Yes, they do. So we're heading for the M6 motorway. And then we're going to meander our way up to the Hard Knot and Rhinos. In half a mile. An MG3. Oh, in the bright yellow as well. And 
Doesn't that remind you of when we went to Goodwood? It does, yes. Gosh, was that 2017? Yeah. <gasps> we went all the way from here to Chichester. And back. <laughs> with an MG3. We and, did. Oh, it was fun. It's not the kind of car that you normally do a run like that in, but... It, oh, it handled it really well. Yeah, it did. So let's join the carriageway. We're at 38. We're now at 70. And that is normal mode. So, let's join the carriageway. We will knock our curves down to one. Go straight. And it won't break the car too much. Uh, it, and the car won't break too much. We're now at 70 miles an hour, and the range has dropped to 155 miles. So by that logic, if I travel with my foot like this, that's the distance we'll travel. Now, if I put my foot down, that range is gonna drop, and if I go slower, then the range is gonna go up. Nice clear cluster, analog speedo on the left, and analog charge meter, shows your efficiency boost, on the right. The thing I do find a little bit challenging is where the cruise control is. Because I'm tall, I don't find it particularly easy to see. But the one thing you should know is that the set is right on the end of the button, which makes it nice and easy to activate it. We're now set to 71 miles per hour. We'll sit on cruise control until our junction. Range has dropped to 151. As you could see then, as soon as I put my foot down, can quite easily exceed motorway limits. Handy to know if you need to get out of trouble quickly or if someone decides it's a good idea to cut you up. There so we're getting off here, yes? Yeah, we're getting off here. There seemed to be plenty of power, didn't there? Yeah, oh yeah. So we're now into a 40 limit. And we'll set the cruise control again. Go straight on for 10 minutes to A591, a Windermere Road. The range is going up, it's now 148 miles. So it feels nice, well planted on the motorway. In heavy winds, you will feel it move a bit, but because of the batteries, it's heavy. So it feels very sure footed. And unless you're really pushing it around corners, you're not going to really notice any body roll, even as a passenger. And it's a really windy day, so I thought it would be a little bit more choppy, and it's not. It's just very comfortable, isn't it? It is. These seats are buckety, but they're big and hold you well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are quite bolsters, aren't they? Yeah. Are they? They're very supportive. You've got great visibility. I've got an electric seat as well. You have. Passengers is manual. For the noise, travelling at 43 on this dual carriage out, which has been freshly laid by the looks of it, I don't think it's too invasive. It's, it's like most of the electric vehicles we've driven, isn't it? Yeah. Range 147 miles. And we're set on curves of one. Right, and should we put it up to two? Modes. Oh. That's sport mode. So we'll put it in eco mode, see how that okay. affects things. 154 miles. That jumped up quickly. Yeah. I like these force limits because it means that I can actually see how economical a car is. Well, it puts the whole range to the test, doesn't it, really? It does, and it also restricts me from flooring it. <laughs> well, That's the biggest thing. You, you are known for your heavy foot. Well, of course. You've got around 150 brake horsepower and it pulls 0 to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. And WLTP claims 214 miles on the range. Now, as you know, we started about 186 and I've been playing around left, right and centre. And now we've dropped down to 40 miles an hour, which is realistically the speed that you'd be travelling whilst around the Lake District. We're sitting at 154 miles. So yeah, maybe we should start selecting a lower curse, but it's not really needed at the moment anyway because we're on cruise control. Should we select Sport? We I shall. I this was going to um, kill my thing, but my word, straight up to the limit. Just so you know, if you're going to use Sport, you are going to eat into your range. There's a slight rainbow up there. Pretty, pretty rainbow. Pot of gold and all that. So going up this hill, 
just depleting like you'd expect, probably mile for mile. It's very subtle indeed. Yeah. Actually, the rain's louder than the actual whir or yeah, whoosh. It is. It's quite refined in here, so you don't hear much road noise unless you're on a really, really atrocious road like this one, which has been for the last 30 years. It's like a patchwork quilt. Also, at this speed, the wind's having no effect on the car at all, which is good. In Eco, 147 miles. Normal, 140. And Sport, 126. Up in there, there are hills. Ooh. In there are hills. In case you're wondering, because it's an EV, you've got a two pedal system. At the roundabout, take the second exit so onto F5. Accelerator on the right, a and road. a big brake pedal on the left. You've also got footrest. Now, what I have to get to grips with is pulling out nice and steadily. Otherwise, your wheels spin. Otherwise, I zap our range. It's a shame we've got no baked Go goods for this on adventure. For 15 minutes to <gasps> that's what we forgot. I know. We've got cheese and onion pasties and... Well, that's got flaky pastry on it. Yeah, so we won't be eating that in the car then. A staple pot noodle and a flask of hot water because I think it's going to be quite chilly on the hard knot on the Rhinos Pass. I reckon so. Sat at 50 miles per hour and it's just dropped to 146 miles. That's taken into account that little steep climb then. Beautiful day. A bit wet, but it looks nice. Well, it is awesome in the lakes. Wouldn't be right without a little bit of rain. And you don't get rainbows without the rain. Okay, we were going to give you an update when we got to Windermere. However, something strange has just happened. Our range has just gone up to 160 miles now we're on the flat. Oh, that's an interesting jump. Yeah, exactly. I do have a car tailgating me, so I, I think it's about time to just uh, floor it. So yeah, we're into boost and uh, yeah, up to the limit. And now I've backed off, it's gone into the charge bar. Back into Eco. Oh, this car's done. Weirdly, it's still sat at 160 miles even after that quick blip. So you can feel confident that you can give it a quick blip if you need to get out of trouble or pull away from a tailgater. Well, it's not going to zip through your range too much, is it? It's no, not going to suck not. too much off it. Which is what I need. When you go from Eco to Normal to Sport and you put your foot ever so slightly down, each time you change, you feel it pin you more. I'm going to show you how well it goes around this bend. Because it's an estate and it's got the weight of the batteries, it really grips. Okay, that zapped a bit of mileage. That's a 25. Time to go back into Eco. Because we're on Regen 3, this is stopping without any braking whatsoever. Now, let's see what creep mode's like. Yeah, so you can creep up hills. Turn right. Do you want to stay on this road Would instead? Would you reckon go left? We go right? I don't know. Yeah, stack it. Now we're getting into Lake District territory, aren't we, Annabelle? I was about to say, and now we're on an adventure trail. Look at all the water. Nice. So we're heading towards Heening Mislet. I've never actually been down this mile. road. Turn left on Two Morehow Road. Ooh. See how deep the water is. So, EVs, common misconception, you can't jet wash them. Yes, you can. As long as you don't go flooring it into deep lakes, then you're all good. You can drive through standing water quite easily. Much the same as you would with any other car, really. We didn't, you know. Yeah, exactly. Look at this, we can just silently pass the lady gardening. Look at all the water, my word. Well, it's been Storm Barbara combined with the tail end of the hurricane name I can't remember. There's been a lot of rainfall. Hurricane Hedgehog, we'll call it. Hurricane Hedgehog, I do like that. The other thing about this vehicle is it's not too low. You can quite easily navigate these roads. It's not too wide either. It just feels like a normal estate car. 
accept EV power train. Okay, it was a fair pothole. But you didn't really, I mean, you heard it more than you felt it, to be honest. Exactly, yeah. Well, I like this road. Group B Rally Road. It's a bit of a head turn of this. That's the other thing. It's a perfect car to go mountain biking. You get a couple of bikes in the back quite easily. You could always put a bike rack on it as well. Well, MG do have quite a lot of accessories. They do. And you get a decent range so you can actually go on a fair old trek. And the best thing, it's going to cost you next to nothing. Well, what are we on our way to do now? Adventurous picnicking. Exactly. Now we've got a quite a steep hill and that's the regen stopping the car and literally if I let it, it's going to stop me and put me on creep mode. When you're traversing roads like these, I think this is going to drop us onto the Kirkston Pass Road, you know. Oh. We're easily going to have enough to do our adventures today. Excellent. Clear? Clear. So we get to go on the Kirkston Pass adventure as well. This is where we brought the Kia e Nero, isn't it? It is. So we're going in touch further. It's keeping good traction, isn't it? Very good. And yeah. it's the first of the electric estates, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, everybody's been bringing out crossovers. I mean, Ford brought out the Active range, which is basically an estate on steroids with a high lift, and I'm a fan of those. So when you know that it's going to be a keep a right full onto Holbeck Lane, EV estate makes you think. Mm, it's like mind blown, isn't yeah. it? Really, that's fantastic. Well, there is a need in the market for an electric version of this kind of car. There is. Even this stop starting, we've still got 137 miles of range. Crazy to think we regularly drive around here in Dorothy. You can zip around these bat lanes, can't you? Yes, you can. And that regen just gives you that added feeling that you know you don't need to brake. It's perfect. Look at that for a view. Wow. We're only partially into our adventure, aren't we? Yes. What we'll do is we'll get to Hard Knock and the rhinos and have lunch. Yay! Okay, this is so steep it's actually overpowering my Regen 3. It's holding us back, but we are we are accelerating. We're not using any range. No, we are not. Coming down that about three mile hill, we've used no range whatsoever. So, recouping is your friend. 66% and 137 miles of range, and we've done about five miles. So it's working really well. Real driving roads as well. That's the thing about this, it may well be an estate car. It's quite engaging because of the way it handles. And the more you put your foot down as well, as I've just found out here, especially because it's quiet, is the space theme tune that comes off the motor does get a touch louder. Okay, how about a range check? 65% battery, 133 miles of range. We stopped here for traffic and all of a sudden we heard thud and we were in a big white Peugeot boxer van and the bike had gone straight to the back of us, push back some reason he hadn't seen it maybe it was reflecting and we didn't quite know what to do he was very apologetic and he was fine but always beware big white Peugeot boxer vans word what a vehicle to follow down here you see that Annabelle I do oh it meanders up here nicely doesn't it it does I like that word meander that's the thing about an electric powertrain it doesn't matter the gradient of the hill you can still just zip up there never seems to be any performance degradation you're getting into the thick of your sanity <laughs> look at this i don't actually know if you've been this far up the lakes to be honest about i haven't yet the last time i came up here was last year could have been the year before the kodiak vrs and i'm much happier than driving something like this with that a touch big for some of these bits yeah 
gas. That puddle. Electric car? No problem. Sploosh. Ooh, climbing towards Little Langdale. Annabelle, I don't think there'll be a road that you've ever driven on that's quite like this. Okay, why? You'll see. My word, a Kodiak. Brave, brave soul. Now in autumn and winter, this road closes and it's for a very good reason. I would find it a bit Larry traveling up around here in the middle of winter. Indeed. So they shut the entire road for a span of time? They shut it if it gets too treacherous. It's, uh, it's got some very steep roads and it's got some big drops as well. Yes, it's very twisty turny as it is. So combine that with those other three, then it would be quite a dangerous trifecta. I was going to say, this is nothing. We've not, we're literally travelling to it at the moment. At first glance, it looks a bit like Kirkston Pass. But it isn't. Not at all. I'm getting this feeling that we're just going to continue to go up and... Oh my goodness. Oh yes. And then there are mountains. This is as far as I got in the Kodiak VRS last time and then thought... Nope. No. No, this'll do. Don't need to go any further. <laughs> okay. Look at those mountains. Oh, it's beautiful around here. It reminds me of the Isle of Man, to be honest. Oh, I see what you mean. It does have that kind of vibe, doesn't it? With it the does. yeah. little cottages as well. He said MG. He did. So, oh, MG. Oh, MG, get it? <laughs> it's cool when someone mouths MG and you get it on camera. Yes. So there's rhinos. See rhinos pass there. Yes. And so I go at rhinos first. Get ready for the clamberino. Climby. Yeah. I was right. We are just going to keep going up and up and up. We are. It's single track pretty much all the way with the odd passing place. Look at it. The storm is setting in. Annabelle. Yes, it is. Deep water, not affecting it in the slightest. Range isn't suffering, 128 miles left. 62% battery. We're going up there? Nope, left. Oh, we're going down here, okay. Now that says something, doesn't it? Ooh. Great farmyard we go. Foul foot farm. Yeah, good. You and your spin. I like this steering wheel as well. It's nice and sporty. It's D-shaped as well, isn't it? Yeah, and you feel in control, which is nice. 25% gradient. Oh, sheepies. And oh, no. if you look left, uh, well, it's a long way down. Whoa. I know, I've just looked down. Mm. Ah. Well, it goes all the way up here, look. It's tray steep. Yes, we are eating into it a bit more. Thought we would be. We're doing 17 miles per hour. 59% of our battery left and we've got 122 miles of range but we're climbing some serious hills now look at those people on the hill I knew and interestingly we're still only using just over two in the efficiency bar yes. right what we're going to do now is see if creep will pull us up and the answer is no Actually, when you stopped there, we didn't go backwards when you took your foot off No, the, the electronic handbrake is very good on this. Yes. How's it feel for you coming down the Rhinos Pass, though? Because it's quite steep, isn't it? It is very steep, and as long as I'm going at a relatively slow and steady pace, it feels perfectly under control. And we're recouping, aren't we? 119 with 58%. And we are in the charge. And we're in eco mode, and we've got regen 3 as well. It's not accelerating, is it? It's just carrying on at that pace. Yes. It's very smooth, actually. Yeah. And now it's starting to pull a little bit more. Yeah, slow, slow you down, of yeah. course, yeah. And, and now you're going we're to creep, in creep mode. mode. Yeah. So your foot's fully off both pedals now, it yeah? It is indeed. So what we'll do is carry on like this, and then it'll slow down. It's a remarkable road, this. 
It looks like something out of the Swiss Alps. Oh, like you said, the Isle of Man. I'm wondering if this is the River Duddon. If it is, this is where I did my geography field trip. Oh. My word. Because we were in... Fi oh, hello, sheeples. We were in efficiency mode there as we were creeping. Got some lovely meandering curves to go around, so... <laughs> it's time for lunch. Decent sized boot and look, our lunch. And the flask can sit there. Certainly is a nice place to have lunch. Just look at this. We've just done the Rhinos Pass. We've got 113 miles of range. And we're ready to take on the next part of our tour, and that's to the Hard Knot Pass. Steep climbs, treacherous roads, and let's see what that does to the MG5. Mind you, very impressed so far. It's not really guzzled most of our range, and it's recouping well too. So Regen 3 is your friend in this kind of terrain. So as I mentioned before, this is where I did one of my field trips for geography for Carnforth High. And this is the River Duddon, which I didn't even know was here until now. It's remarkable what pops into your head when you see a location. But we're heading that way. And you're right, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Well, it's a lake district, isn't it? That's the thing. It looks like Scotland. It looks like the Alps, dependent on where you are. I mean, I was considering doing... If it's sky for... If it's... Sorry, it didn't like... 